The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Let me just look at last versus love. Last versus love. Last is senseless and careless. So one at a time, love is senseless and careless. You realize that despite the advice the lady was giving this young man, he will not take it. Stop. You will be a fool. Don't do this to me. It is not done in Israel, but this young man was senseless. He was just following the desire. And when somebody is doing that to you, the person does not really love you. The person is lusting after you. Very, very careless. He didn't care whether he lost the throne or not just for you to sleep with a girl. Number two, lust is about satisfaction. Love. No, let, let me take the first one. Lust is senseless and careless. Love subordinates feelings to value. Now, we all have feelings. When you don't have any feeling towards an opposite sex, Maybe you may be an angel that has just arrived. I don't know. But the, the mere fact that you have a feeling towards an opposite set does not mean anything. It only tells you that you are a human being and that you are alive. You are not dead. That is all. But love will always subordinate feeling to values. Number two. Lust is about satisfaction. Satisfaction. He, Amnon just wanted to satisfy himself. Love is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. When somebody really loves you, he will not put you in a family way whilst you are in school. He will not even try to, to, to do all these kind of things with you. No. Love is sacrifice. They have all the patience to wait for the right time. Last is now. Love is then. Let's wait. Let's wait. Lust is insistent. Insistent. Now, sometimes when you, you, you have some affection towards this lady, and in 12 midnight, every second you want to be testing, then what you are going through you are becoming Amnon small, small. Yeah. That, that is not real love. It, it shouldn't be that insistent. And that's what you baby own to me in your That's for this lady. And sometimes when people want to marry and the parents come in, try to intervene, say, oh, please wait. I'm not comfortable. You say, it's one mama, why not? I mean, who will not Who will go and bury you? That, wait. See, when sometimes these things are not real love, it is just a getting love, getting love, getting love. love last is insist, insistent, love is patient. Last torments. Love is peace and refreshing. Last torments. Love is peace and refreshing. Lust cannot be trusted like Amnon. When you see that somebody is lusting after you, don't hang around that person. Especially when the person makes some one or two advances and you know that this young man or this lady is interested in me amorously. Don't be hanging around those people. You can't trust them. Don't. When a lecturer makes some advances towards you, don't be frequenting the lecturer's house. 
When a young man touches you at the wrong place, don't say, oh, brother, oh, brother, stop, brother, stop. No, say stop. If you listen to the language Tamar used, there was exclamation mark, exclamation mark. She was serious. Her voice was strong. Lust cannot be trusted, but love is dependable. It never fails. Many waters cannot quench love. Love is dependable. Let us look at the resultant effect of Amnon's action on her sister Tamar. Verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has Amnon, your brother, been with you? You see, because of the action of her sister. So Absalom saw the sister and he could read into what has gone on. Be quiet now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. Now, my interest is the last sentence. Shall we read together? And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. Can you imagine? This beautiful girl, now a desolate, desolate woman. She wasn't able to overcome that thought. And she is now depressed. I say, where will her beauty be? She will not enjoy the, the kind of marriage that the king's daughters will enjoy. She lived there, a spoiled lady. That is the resultant effect of Amnon's action. How could Amnon do such a thing, such a wicked thing to, against her own sister? The answer is simple. His friend. His friend. His friend. His friend is the answer. When we talk about a friend, we mean person attached to one another by feeling of affection or personal regard. Such persons gives, such persons give assistance or support to one another. So that is a friend. We attach to them and then we give support. Such is a friend. Proverbs 27 verse 9. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart. And the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. The pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. So a very good friend gives pleasant and heartfelt advice. So we always want to hang around with our friends because we talk and they also talk to us. That is friend. See, Amnon's problem, all that has happened is because of Amnon's friend. See, Amnon thought it hard to do anything to her and he would have stopped because there was no way, it was quite impossible. So eventually he would have stopped. But he had a friend called Jonadab and Jonadab was a very subtle guy. When he thought of the father, the king, the king and the implications on the kingship, he would have stopped. But he had a friend called Jonadab. Jonadab was a shrewd guy. See, Amnon had training. In fact, the father has taught all of us that what can a young man, how can a young man keep his way pure? Says by watching his, by moving according to the statutes of God. The father is a great teacher. And Amnon himself, he, he knew that he had training. Otherwise, how would he know that such a thing cannot be done? Why was it impossible for him? Why? Because the father has taught them. But, and so he would have stopped anyway. But he had a friend. He had a friend. He never became the king of Israel. Though he was the rightful heir of, to the throne. Because he had a friend. 
He went to the premature grave. In fact, after two years, Absalom also killed Amnon because of the sister. To avenge the sister, Am- Absalom also killed Amnon. So Amnon died just two years after. He went to the premature grave. Why? Because he, Amnon, had a certain friend. Tamar never saw the joy of marriage because his brother Amnon had a certain friend. Hatred amongst the family of David. Now, if we got to a time that Absalom himself rose against David, it's all the, the beginning of all that Absalom did was because of the rape. All because Absalom, his brother Amnon, had a certain friend. Show me your friend, and I'll show you who you are or what you will soon become. You show me your friend, and I'll show you who you are or what you will soon become. If your wife's best friend is this divorcee, uh, be careful. Otherwise, you will be divorced. See, because when they meet together, the kind of discussions may center around, you see, these days, when I let go my husband, when I left the house, I'm free. I don't cook. I come home any time. Say, as for me, we are still in the cooking business. And the man too, show me your friend and I will show you who you are or what you soon become. You show me your friend and I will show you who you are or what you soon become. There were this young man who, um, one of them's father had a vehicle. Uh, he was a rich guy. So they were on vacation. They lived in the same community. So this guy took the father's car, and then they started picking some young men. It was a backy, a pickup. So some of them would jump at the back. Others were sitting in it. And so they were going around and then driving carelessly. But there was this old man who was also trimming his hedges. Any time that they got to where the man was, they made, they, 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 they threatened as if they were going to hit the man. The old man would jump away, and they would come back and do that disturbing the man. Then they picked this friend called Joe. So when Joe, uh, Joe just jumped into the back, the back, uh, the, the, the bucket, and so Joe was also there. Then they got to where this old man was, but not knowing that the old man was frustrated. So he has gone to take his gun. So when they did that, the old man shot. Guess who died? Guess who died? Joe. When Joe was buried, they had this on his tomb. They wrote this on his tomb. This is Joe, he would have been alive, but he had some friends. This is Joe. He would have been alive, but he had some friends. Shall we rise to our feet now? Show me your friend, and I'll show you who you are or what you will soon become. When I even became a pastor, up to today, I'm careful of people who have become my friends. Because you can have some other people who have come into the pastoral ministry and their, their focus is not Christ. It is because it's difficult to get a job. So they have come as an employee. For them, their concern is how much we get. There are always the miss multitude. There are always people who are miss multitude. So even in the pastoral ministry, be careful who becomes your friend. How much more pains are. Shall we just lift up your hands now? This is Joe. He would have been alive, but he has some friends. Shall we pray? That God will help us. That we will become good friends and save us from friends like Jonadab. Shall we pray? Just pray for yourself. We are even praying to our future. Oh God, help us. 
Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, shall we please keep standing wherever you are, UDS, KNUST, please stand for a moment. Stand for a moment. Proverbs 18, verse 24. We will take Proverbs 18, 24, and then we will sit down. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who stays closer than a brother. If you have friends like Jonadab, you will soon be destroyed. But there still are good friends who will stay closer than a brother. So the life is not only about Jonadab, they are also Jonathan's good friends who saved David. So we need to look for the Jonathan's and the Jonadab's. Shall we please sit down? Evil communication corrupts good morals. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Bad friends will take you out of the church. Bad friends will take you out of the church. Pull you out from your home. Bad friends will ruin your career. Bad friends will destroy your children. Bad friends will be a distraction to you. So, how do we choose a friend? I have said that we have the Jonadab and we also have the Jonathans. They are all available. How do you or do I choose a friend? I will give you the basic principle that you have to look for when you are choosing a friend. I will add two more. But the first one is the basic. That one should be held constant. Then I'll give you two more, just two. And then top it up with all that you know. And then I'll summarize the three in a statement. So let's move on. The basic principle that you have to apply when you are looking for a friend is Psalm 119, verse 63. Psalm 119, verse 63. Psalm 119, verse 63. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. This is the basic principle. So, when you are looking for a friend, be a friend to all who fear the Lord. People who have set God apart yeah, they have set God apart as Lord in their lives. Be a friend to all who fear the Lord. This one should be the basic principle. Hold this one constant. A people who fear the Lord, they should be your friend. Then I'll add this to Number two, walk with wise people. Look for young people, young ladies who are wise. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. See, wise people are very discreet. They are, they are, they, they are prudent. Uh, wise people are understanding. Now, wise people love counsel. Walk with the wise. Wise people know that we don't marry in KNUST. And that KNUST is a school. We learn, we don't marry there. So wise people do not, be, do not sleep around with girls. Because that place is for learning. We don't marry there. So walk with the wise and you'll be wise. They wouldn't spend money anyway, anyhow. They wouldn't want to join gangsters, wise people. They, they know the end from the beginning. They are, they are smart. Number three, 
Look out for diligent people. Look out for diligent people and walk with them and let them be your friends. Proverbs 12. Verse 24. Proverbs 12, 24. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in false labor. Now, when you diligent hand, they are studious, they are hardworking, they spend quality time doing things that will help their future. And the Bible says that such people will rule. So walk with them so that you can also rule. Walk with diligent people. Proverbs 13, verse 4. Proverbs 13, verse 4. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desire of the diligent are fully satisfied. Sluggard, study, learn, be diligent, and then your desire will be satisfied. When you have people like that as friends, it's better. When he has to go to SU, they are there. They are going to Pensa. They commit spirit, soul, and body in everything they do. And they do it well. When it comes to studying, they also study. From the word go, they start learning as if tomorrow is exams time. And then when they have space, they are in Pensa. They also learn and they love God as if Jesus is going to carry the next day. Diligent people, they will rule. Let me summarize these three. In Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. I'm summarizing all these three in Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in, in step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take. Or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And whose, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Fine. But do you not only look for such things in people, be one yourself. Yeah. Do not just look for Wisdom in people, be wise yourself. Do not look for diligence in people, be diligent yourself. Do not look for the fear of God in people so that you can become their friends. Let the fear of God rule your life so that you yourself, you are a good friend that people can have. Have I communicated? So when we are saying that friends, friends, prepare yourself to be a good friend. Be somebody who fear God. Walk in wisdom and pray for wisdom. Be very diligent. Be very diligent so that people can have you as good friends. So that they can partner with you and save our world. So that when you come home with them and your parents see them, they are happy. Very decent. Very decent guys. You see, God, bad friends can teach you how to dress to shock everybody minus yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people like that, when they come to your house and your parents say, ah, Akushia, I don't for Ben Walk of Fanabai. Even the way they dress will speak about who your friend is. But anyway, before I end, let me say this. God also has friends. And I want to encourage you to join his friends. God also has friends. One of my greatest prayers is, oh God, make me one of your friends. Make me try. God, you try. Fix me somewhere. <laughs> I've been praying about God. You make me one of your friends. Try. Because the John Wesley's are gone, the Moses are gone. I'm here. So just fix me somewhere. <laughs> it is one of my greatest prayers. When we were in South Africa, there was this young man, um, let me say, we had a program, and we invited some South African singers to come and help us. And 
when they were leaving, this lady said he's had a message from the Lord. And so he asked somebody to come and give me the message. But the message was simple. And that God says that he loved a certain young man in our church. So, the church that I am a pastor. God loves somebody but not me. <laughs> and then they, they mentioned the name. In fact, the name she had, she mentioned it. And this is a South African, and this one has a typical uh, Akan name. But she mentioned it. And then when I heard the name, and I checked it with the human being, I could feel in my spirit that this prophecy, this word is true. That guy was, he has a deacon. And he loved the Lord. He has never been praying in church. He's not led a prayer meeting. He's never preached before. But one day when we were building, I went to the site one afternoon. And I saw him around. He was there alone. I said, ah, what are you doing here? He said, oh, the day we'll finish this building, I'll be glad. We, we were just at the footing level. And he is saying that the day we'll finish, he'll be glad. He's left his job. It was break time, and he has rushed to where we are building. When we come to, it comes to offering, he will work very hard and give us some, some good money. He wasn't the richest, but he would give good money. And so when I saw him that day, I realized that he loved God, and he loved the things of God. But I didn't know that heaven loves him. From that day, I started repenting small, small. Say, God, see, it's, it's not about the pastor. It is about a certain person and a certain heart. You see, when people are just doing anything, don't join them. Because the eyes of the Lord goes through and flow the earth. He's looking for a certain person. And let it be you. So that you will not just be a friend of somebody, a good friend like Jonadab saving the Davids, but a friend of God. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 7. 2 Chronicles 27. Ah, God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Huh? To Abraham, your what? Your friend. God has friends. Exodus 33, verse 1. Exodus 33. The Lord, who sp the Lord said to... The Lord will speak. 33, verse 11, sorry. The Lord... Exodus 33, verse 11. The Lord will speak to Moses face to face as one speak to a friend. Then Moses will return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. One day, Aaron and Miriam, the blood siblings, rare siblings of Moses, they spoke against me and God said, what? Are you people not afraid to speak to this servant of mine? Somebody that I speak face to face, my friend. So God has friends. And today, I want to lift the bar. Not just for you to be a good friend to your fellow and to let go of these evil friends that have come in your life and be a good friend yourself, but be a friend of God. Shall we rise to our feet now? Oh, God. Be a friend of God. Be a friend of God. Shall we take that song, I'm a, I'm, I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of Get ready for prayer. So you see this message, when we're preaching, nobody was standing up and say, hey, preach on. Because it's about you. The people who say preach on is as if preach to somebody. That is why we don't encourage these things in our, in our church. Every time that you sit, receive it for yourself. Transform your life so you can transform others. Do we want to be good friends? 
Do we want to get the Jonadabs out of our lives? Do it today. Yeah. Do it today. When Jonah was in the, heart, the belly of the fish, in Jonah chapter 2, verse 8, let's read from the King James, Jonah 2, 8. Jonah 2, verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. Give me the ESV too, let me see. Those who pay regard to vain idols Forfeit their, their hope of steadfast love. Do you, then give me NIV, 1984, NIV. Okay, let me take this one. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. I like this one. Now, my brother, uh, my tall brother, come. Hold the scripture. Those who cling to worthless idols. Let's say that I'm a lady and this one is my boyfriend. Now listen. If you cling to worthless idols, you forfeit the grace your own husband will never come. That is what it means. If you cling to worthless idols, you forfeit the love that should be yours. So don't cling to it. If there's somebody giving you some advice and you call a friend who is leading you away from God, let the first thing go so that the Jonathans will come your life. Yeah. This is what we mean. If you cling on to worthless idols, you will forfeit the grace that can be yours. Shall we lift up our hands and then begin to pray for yourself? Oh God. Oh God. Let me be a good friend. Grant me the year and the wisdom to be able to separate the Jonathans from the Jonadabs. Shall we pray together?